that's a long time okay we can do it we are live we are live and welcome uh, audience of which there probably isn't going to be many at this current moment while they come flooding i'm sure to the first ever live let's talk cybersec this is actually episode seven of our um of our little weekly cybersecurity chat show that we uh, that we've started to do in the last month or two. Oh, oh, we've got the feedback. We've got feedback already. One second. Turn off your speaker, Andy. Oh no, then you won't be able to hear me. No, no, it's okay. We've got feedback already. Technical issues, eh? Graham, do you know anyone technical? Right, sorry about that, guys. That should all be sorted. Um, yeah, as I was saying, um, first live show, clearly live show. <laughs> look, at, look, at the, look at the technical hiccups already. Um, and we've got a very special guest, but because he laughed, um, he's given away his identity already. So my intro has been blown out of the water. I was going to say he was a, he's a very big Doctor, Doctor Who fan, a terrible chess player. Um, he has got humongous eyebrows. Um, and luckily for him, his InfoSec knowledge is larger than his eyebrows. Um, he is an InfoSec Hall of Famer. He's a friend of forces. He's an award-winning blogger, an award-winning vlogger. I mean, there is no end to this man's talent, and he's been fighting cybercrime since 1990. Um, everybody, big hand for Graham Cluley. Hello, thank you very much. Well, I say thank you, but... There were some comments about my eyebrows, which were a little bit offensive, but um, they are very, they are very large, though. Well, these things are relative. I mean, I don't. I mean, I wouldn't comment on parts and sizes of your anatomy. Um, but anyway, let's let's moving on. Moving let's on. Not... What's what are you up to at the minute, Graham? Well, talking to you mostly, Andy. You know, it's a it's a Friday afternoon, and so it's uh, actually Friday afternoon is my favourite time of the week because it's um, I can relax a bit, you know. It's like, and, oh, you know what else? As we're recording this, isn't it the Thanksgiving weekend in America? Yes, it is. Which is fantastic. Which means all the hackers, or at least all the companies that they're hacking into, are off on holiday right now, not noticing that they're being breached, which means nothing is happening in the world of security because no one's reporting it. The fact is things are happening, but no one's actually reporting it. So it's quite quiet, which I love. Which means we can all take a, you know, a bit of a breather, of course, the Americans will be back next week, and uh, then it will kick off again. It will. It will. Yeah, that's. Um, but I just want to say thank you for tidying up in the background. I mean, what is what on earth's going on? I mean, just mean? that is a very very messy room. Well, you say messy. I say I say there's a man who's clearly very productive, um, works jolly hard, and doesn't fuss around to do much with stuff which isn't very important. So. But Works very hard, eh? I mean, I do. A, a, a blog article a day. I mean, we all know it's ghostwritten as well, Graham. You know. <laughs> Slightly offended. I mean, we can all tell your blog isn't ghostwritten. But <laughs> if only it were. Um, uh, well, what's that? Is that a fan? One of those fans in the background. I've seen one of those before. Is that is that a modern a modern day fan? Is that what's all that about? What is this chat show that I've come on? Is this Lloyd Grossman through the keyhole? You're just gonna. <laughs> Comment on things in the background. Yes, I, I'm just waiting for a few viewers to turn up. That's all. Oh, okay. I've got a I've got a fan in the background. If that's interesting to people, yes. Um, doesn't get used much now. It's November, of course, and the weather's miserable. Um, I've got books and things. If you if you were to ever watch one of my <coughs> award-winning videos, um, <laughs> then you would probably. I don't know if you've received any awards yourself, Andy. Then you would have um, seen the galaxy, the galumphry, indeed, of books which are over here. Mostly my wife's. Um, to do with um, cooking and not effing up your children and French dictionaries and things like that. I've always been a little bit petrified, actually, because I make a lot of my video blogs at home in this room. And with high-definition cameras, it's scary how much you can see in the background. And they're probably... I shouldn't probably point people in this direction, but there are probably books behind me um, in the videos, which would be a little bit embarrassing if people could tell what they were. So there's a challenge for your, your oh, viewers. Guys, I want uh, viewers, I want you to guess in the comments section, what is the embarrassing books that Graham has behind him? 
Is it? Is it? Can't? Is it play better chess? Oh, I, I, that, I, that would be my guess. I, I do have a number of uh, play better chess books, as you can see. There you go. Yeah. Um, I, I can see the chessboard in the background. Yes, I have a chessboard. In fact, it, you've you've joined me at a sad. It's, it's a good job no one's tuned in for information security chat, um, so we can talk about this. But um, I've had a bit of an unsuccessful week actually. I play for my local village um, for their chess club, and two times this week I've played other villages, important matches, and two losses for Cluley. That's and not good. It's too much blogging and and blogging. You spend less time blogging and vlogging. And more time on your chess game. And age. Age as well. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's all falling apart. Right. Okay. Look, let's get down to business. Um, we, um, we missed last week's episode of Let's Talk uh, Cyber Sec. And I hate to say it, but it was Graham's fault. We were meant to be doing it with Graham. Uh, he pulled out on us um, without much, uh, you know, excuse or, or, or time. And um, we also were at um, a, a couple of our events. We were touring around the country, so we didn't actually get to um, to film it, um, to fil film another episode at such short notice when, when Graham pulled out um, of us. But one, of the main story that we missed. Can I just say, I didn't actually pull out. I never pushed in. Well, um, we've been, we've been so talking I... for a few few weeks now. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying. We, you asked, but the main, the main story that we missed last week was, of course, NHS Mail. And Graham, you did a video on this, very entertaining. In the description, guys, if you have a look, there's a link to it. Don't click on it now. Wait until we finish the broadcast, obviously. Um, have a watch of that. But um, it, it, what it points out um, to to myself is the. Uh, the takeaway from it is obviously the, the insider threat to, I guess, the data. I mean, this was obviously a big nuisance to the NHS and, and, and caused a lot of ripples. But um, uh, behind it, it, there's actually a serious message. And that's that accidental data loss accounts for, you know, 90 plus percent of, of data loss as a whole. Um, and uh, it, it highlights actually how easy it is to do. Uh, now, luckily, obviously, no no data was was sent out of the organisation within NHS. But yeah. that that would be the one takeaway, Graham, from it from from my point of view. What about you? Yeah, I mean, what, what for those people who haven't been following, what happened was an email storm, effectively, a sort of email tornado, um, where someone in the IT department set up a mailing list to, and they accidentally included everybody in the National Health Service on this mailing list, and they sent an email which just said test. And that went to, I don't know, one and a half million people. And one and a half million people looked at this email <laughs> and thought, oh, I wonder if they really meant to send that to me. I'll just very helpfully say, did you mean to send this to me? Or your test succeeded? Or I'm not sure why you sent this to me? And so forth. And that then, of course, got sent to one and a half million people again. And so you had this huge amount of email flying around everywhere. And every time someone replied saying, can you please take me off this mailing list? That then went to everyone else as well. And I'm sure many of us have experienced exactly that happening inside our companies. And although it is kind of funny when it happens, it also meant that regular emails and regular communications weren't working. It was effectively a kind of denial of service attack. Email was no longer working inside the NHS because of a very human goof. And no long, no long term harm has been done as a result of it. Um, you know, no data has been breached or anything like that. But it just says that sometimes it can be the people inside your companies who are introducing risks. And they may not be doing it maliciously. And those are the kind of things which we need to protect against. But it's a funny instant, and uh, I talk about it some more in that video. Yeah, so check that one out. That's in the in the description. Anyway, that was last week's news. Let's um, let's focus on what's happened this week. And uh, surprise, surprise, uh, adult uh, friend finder was hacked yet again for for God knows you know the umph time. I've lost count to be honest. Um, hundreds of millions of accounts were, have been exposed. Um, and this time it took them over a week to report the incident. Graham, why, why is this bad? Well, what's bad is that we knew a couple of weeks ago that Adult Friend Finder had been hacked. 
Um, and it was in all the security headlines and the security journalists were talking about it and all the rest of it. But it took this long for Adult Friend Finder to actually begin to warn its users. And even then, they only warned their users when they logged into the website. And if you remember, Adult Friend, I'm sure you remember, Andy, Adult Friend Finder is that site for adults who need friends. Um, you know, who are, who are, we all need more friends, don't we, Graham? Well, well, some some of us are, 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 are maybe some of us need more friends than others. I don't know. Maybe some of us have a lack. Uh, but you know, but a particular kind of close friend. You know, that's the kind of relationship which you're having there. And so, the sheer fact that it's Adult Friend Finder is embarrassing. We saw this, of course, with Ashley Madison, and I, I mean, we've been joking during this video, but Ashley Madison had very serious consequences to some people, you know, marriages were ruined and there are reports of some people who committed suicide as a result. And there are still people being blackmailed to this day um, as a consequence of the Ashley Madison hack. And Adult Friend Finder, similarly, you don't necessarily want people to know that you're a member of Adult Friend Finder. So I think it's really poor job of Adult Friend Finder to only begin to warn people who were members of the site one week or so after the hack and even then, it's even worse that you have to log into the site to be told. It's why is an adult friend finder being more proactive in contacting those users and saying, we've had the most terrible accident? Because some people might have created an account on that site 15 years ago. They may not be in the habit of regularly going on. And shouldn't they be informed as well that potentially their privacy has been harmed? Uh, you know, I just, I just think it's sloppy. I think it just says that they don't give a damn. So the, the site actually um, haven't emailed their users to, to tell them you, when they get a pop-up or a warning or a message when they log into the site? It's when you log into the site. Wow, very, very, um, yeah, very poor, that seems. And is there any excuse um, at all for companies, not just specifically these guys, but for the lag in, in incident reporting and, and in informing their users? Well, there's no reasonable excuse. From the business point of view, they may well be thinking, well, we don't want to tell everyone that we've been hacked again, because it did happen about, I think it was early 2015, Adult Friend Finder last got hacked. Um, and they may be just thinking, well, we don't want to draw attention to it because we might lose money as a business. I, that's the only reason I can imagine they're doing it. In my opinion, that's not justifiable. The privacy and security of your users comes first and you have to take those kind of things on the chin. You have to apologize and you have to try and rebuild your brand and restore confidence in what you're doing. And Adult Friend Finder, I suspect, um, have done a, a lot of harm to themselves. Um, but there'll still be people still looking for friends, right, Andy? Well said. Well said. Well, I'm not personally uh, one of them. I'm sure you're, you're not either. But if, if any of uh, Adult Friend Finder's users were listening right now, Graham, what, what advice would you give them? I guess the, the thing to consider is that you may have created your Adult Friend Finder account a long time ago. Maybe you were much sloppier about your password requirements back then. Maybe you used dictionary words. Maybe you used the same word for multiple accounts. Um, so make sure you're not using that password anywhere else. Change the password. My recommendation would be, if you can, delete and eradicate your account and hope that Adult Friend Finder will honor their word and properly erase your data as well. There have been cases with websites like this where you've deleted your accounts and they haven't actually properly zapped the data. And by the way, it's not just Adult Friend Finder. There are other websites of a similar nature owned by the same company who were also breached. Good to know. Right, moving on to uh, MailChimp, which is um, a very interesting hack, this one. Some MailChimp um, customers' accounts were compromised, and um, the end result was that these customers, their, their newsletter uh, database was, um, was emailed, um, was emailed some um, malicious email. And Graham, I've seen that you've been doing some extensive digging this week, and you've reported it on your blog, GrahamCluedy.com, go check that out. Um, what's, uh, what's happened here? Um, so yeah, MailChimp is the email newsletter uh, agency used by many, many brands. Um, I use it myself, I've used it for my business, I also use it sometimes personally. Um, and uh, what happened was not that MailChimp suffered a breach. I mean, that's important to say. MailChimp itself wasn't hacked, but 
there were accounts owned by MailChimp customers which were accessed by spammers and they sent out messages via those accounts to newsletter subscribers um, claiming to be an invoice. And of course, people would see an email which had arrived and they'd click on the link and bam, their computer gets infected or bam, they're sent to a spammy web page. Now, there was a lot of discussion as to how this might have happened. And there's a number of possibilities. One way is that these people were using dumb passwords, maybe dictionary words. Another possibility is that password reuse, or maybe they were fished um, by very rudimentary technique like that. However, I was contacted by another security researcher who's chosen to remain na um, anonymous, saying that he had come across a database of credentials. And it was actually something like 2 million different credentials in there, but from all kinds of different sites, banking sites, social networks, and so forth. But it included about 2,000 usernames and passwords connected with MailChimp as well. And he reached out to me because he had contacted MailChimp and he hadn't had a very much in the way of a response from them. But his view was, these users need to be warned. It may not be the reason why these particular accounts have been hacked, but it seems plausible. So uh, I reached out to MailChimp. I told them about it as well and said, look, I'm planning to write about this. I think you need to reset these passwords and inform these users. Um, and thankfully, that's now happened. But the reason why that database of credentials was gathered was because of a piece of malware called Vortrack. And that is a uh, piece of Windows malware, which is spread via infected Microsoft Word documents and installs a dropper onto your computer. It's a Trojan, which steals all manner of information from your computer and can spy on you. But one of the things they can grab is your MailChimp password alongside everything else as well. And that appears to be at least where some of these credentials could have come from. Um, and thankfully, MailChimp have now reset the passwords. But I worry because those 2,000 people, if their MailChimp passwords have been grabbed, their other passwords have been grabbed as well. They've had malware on their computer. It will have. It wasn't just interested in Mailchimp. It would have grabbed their banking passwords and their Facebook passwords and their Twitter passwords and their eBay passwords and Gmail and Hotmail and Outlook and who knows what else. So people really need to be warned about these kind of things happening. And we've all got to get a lot better about protecting our computers and having secure passwords and maybe enabling two-factor authentication too. Have you got any details on the malware itself in terms of how did it use, uh, capture the, the passwords, username yeah. of the credentials? There, there's a variety of methods which it can use. It can pop up uh, interim dialogues. So you visit a web page, for instance, and it will uh, inject over the web page its own form asking you for your username and password. And so you can be tricked into entering that. But the other thing it can do is it can do keystroke login. So as you're typing in information, I mean, there's a huge amount of information which Vortrack can steal. It can grab your webcam to spy on you. It, can ha it has remote access over your computer to steal files from your hard drive. Um, it's a very sophisticated piece of malware which criminals have been abusing for some time. You were very um, uh, scathing of Adult Friend Finder for the way that they've handled um, you know, their, their breach. Now, I know that you said... Uh, and I know that MailChimp haven't had a, a breach, you know, personally. But but have you been satisfied by the way that they've they've handled uh, this case? Well, yeah. When I when I reached out to them, they got back to me fairly promptly and told me they were looking into it. And then uh, they informed me later that they'd reset the passwords. I think that's pretty good. I don't know exactly what they told the users. I would hope that they told them to enable two-factor authentication, which is available on MailChimp. And one of the great things about MailChimp is it actually gives you a reduction in your monthly charge if you enable two-factor authentication. I think that's a really positive wow. approach. That is fantastic. That is fantastic, isn't it? Isn't it? We all love to save money. I, and I know it's marketing, right? And MailChimp actually is brilliant at marketing. If you're into podcasts, you'll hear them sponsoring so many podcasts and getting their name out there. They're, they're a cool company. Uh, but, you know, I would love to see more companies and websites encouraging their users to enable 2FA just by giving us some kind of perk back, you know, and that might be the thing which gets people to to get on board the 2FA bandwagon. And what's the, what's the perk, Graham? It's 10% off every month. Decent. Yeah. Not bad, right? Yeah, worth it. Worth it for a click of the button and, a, and to be more secure in a little uh, mobile app. Yeah, very good, very good. There's um, 
uh, we've heard uh, of companies putting, uh, you know, like bar, uh, bug bounty schemes, um, you know, externally, actually internally, um, raising awareness uh, to the tech teams for, you know, potential security breaches or, you know, suspicious activity going on. Um, and they get uh, rewarded for that if it is indeed, you know, uh, potentially, um, you know, something wrong, uh, a vulnerability that they've discovered. Um, so yeah, this is um, this is this is great, great stuff. Okay, uh, do you use Mailchimp? I do. Yeah, I use it for my uh, newsletter, and I've got friends who use it as well. I, I've got. I'm going to a party this weekend. One of my friends. It's her birthday party, and I'm a tier zero friend of hers. So um, I've got an invite. And um, are you are you coming to that party, Andy? I don't know what friend you're talking about, Graham. Oh, do you? Okay, all right. No. But um, the two thousand um, the 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 two thousand uh, list. Be honest here. Did you have a? Did you? Were you a little bit worried? That your name was going to come up when the when the anonymous uh, uh, security researcher emailed you that list. Um, well, even if I had been, I mean, I, I must admit, I I did check. Um, but even if I had been, I wouldn't have been worried because I have two-factor authentication set up on my Mailchimp account. So even if someone did work out my Mailchimp username and password, um, they shouldn't be able to access my account unless they've also got access to my smartphone. What a pro you are. I wouldn't expect any any less of an answer. <laughs> Graham, I, we've used far too much of your time already. It's only meant to be 20 minutes. I think it's uh, uh, far gone that. So um, thank you ever so much for joining us. It's been a um, hell of a lot of fun. Um, before you go, I always do a, um, a question of the day to our audience. Um, okay. I'd like to get them to, to interact if, uh, if possible and um, uh, make a comment and today's uh, question of the day is what is your favorite bit of malware of all time? Graham, what's yours? Favorite, favorite malware? Favorite malware, yeah. Isn't all favorite. malware bad? It is bad, it is bad. Good but name, Andy, malware. <laughs> it's not goodware. <laughs> it's, of course it's bad, of course it's bad, but there's, you know, there, there'll be a little, I'm sure inside of you, there's, there's, you know, you've got something close to your heart. That, that you were, you know, particularly. Uh, you want me to share mine? You want to sh me to share mine? Well, yeah, I would like you to share yours. Yeah, lead the way for our audience to, to you okay. know, to, to answer the question. Let me have a think. Oh, I got a good one. Okay, so in the um, late 1990s, macro viruses exploded. Huge problem, mostly in Word documents and Excel spreadsheets. But a guy called Mark Ludwig wrote a virus for Lotus Ami Pro, which was a competitor to uh, Microsoft Word, which no one remembers anymore. And his virus was called Green Stripe. And what it did, I thought was really cute, because it would look at your documents, and it would take every occurrence of the word its, I-T-S, and it would change it every now and then to I-T apostrophe S. And also, it would change every, every now and then. It would change it apostrophe s to its. Now, I don't know if you, Andy, are a stickler for detail and for grammatical correctness, right? Absolutely. I mean, I'm in marketing. You know, I, oh. I, I point out grammatical errors on your blog pretty much daily. <laughs> well, I appreciate the traffic, um, but yeah, but, I mean, that's the kind of thing which really appeals to me because that, those are the sort of things which just infuriate me. You know, if someone can't do, it's like there and there, right? So I'm going to propose green stripe because it changed its to its. And how funny is that? That is that is fantastic. Graham, thank you ever so much. Thanks to our live audience for tuning in um, uh, this afternoon. Um, apologies that I didn't get to see any of your comments or questions. There's been a little technical hitch uh, on, on my uh, error, on my part. Um, so um, sorry we didn't get to those. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, so you can see future episodes, I'm sure we'll be doing more live videos. And if Graham um, isn't too offended with some of my comments today, he may even be back in the future. Um, subscribe to Graham's YouTube's, uh, YouTube channel um, uh, if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you again next week for some more Let's Talk About CyberSec. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Graham. Cheerio. Andy, where have you gone? Where have you gone, Andy? I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
Don't leave me here on my own, Andy.